Today we are starting a new topic. We have recently studied bacteria and viruses. Our next module fo focuses on the kingdom of plants. The characteristics of all plants are as follows. They are photosynthetic, multicellular, eukaryotic, reproduce sexually, and have cell walls made of cellulose, which is a carbohydrate. Right. Plants are divided into two major groups depending upon their characteristics. The first group is non-vascular plants, which have no true roots, stems, or leaves. Examples include mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. The second group is vascular plants, which contain phloem and xylem. Phloem transports nutrients in the form of glucose, and the xylem transports water and minerals. Phloem and xylem look like the tiny tubes or hoses. There are three kinds of vascular plants. Xylem and phloem are found in vascular plants. Water is going to zip up xylem from the roots to the other parts of the plants. Food is going to flow down phloem from the leaves to other parts of the plants. Phloem and xylem look like tiny tubes or hoses that are attached end to end. Seedless gymnosperms and angiosperms. Seedless vascular plants have a vascular system but no seeds, and they reproduce via spores. Examples of seedless vascular plants would be ferns, horsetails, and club mosses. Gymnosperms have a vascular system and reproduce via male and female cones. Pollination occurs via wind, water, or animals. Examples of this are the ginkgo or conifers, like our Christmas trees. Angiosperms have a vascular system and reproduce via flowers. This group includes flowering plants and produce a fruit. The flower becomes the fruit and the fruit aids in seed dispersal. Okay. This diagram shows a type of cladogram that shows evolutionary history of plants. In this diagram I want you to notice uh, how it moves from left to right. Notice uh, green algae, then non-vascular plants, and then va vascular plants with spores, uh, plants with seeds that are gymnosperms that have seeds and cones, and then um, angiosperms that have seeds and flowers, um, then you have monocots and dicots. Non-vascular plants such as hornworts, liverworts, and mosses do not have true roots, stems, or leaves. Seedless vascular plants have xylem and phloem but do not have seeds. They reproduce via spores. Some examples are ferns, horsetails, and club mosses. Gymnosperms have a vascular system and reproduce via male and female cones. Pollination occurs via wind, water, or animals. Some pictures that you see here are ginkgos and conifers. Angiosperms are the most advanced plants. They have a vascular system and they reproduce via flowers which contain seeds. This group has um, produced fruit and inside the fruit would be seeds that would aid with dispersal of seeds. So when we talk about adaptations in plants we discuss five main points. One, flowers have bright colors and sweet smell to attract pollinators. Two, thorns used for, are used for protection. Three, cuticles are waxy, have a waxy outer layer on leaves to prevent water loss. Four, the roots have a long root system, uh, which helps plants access water uh, that is far away. And five, uh, different methods of seed dispersal. Keep in mind that these adaptations are changes that occur over a very long period of time. So it's not something that just changes overnight. Plants have to control what goes in and out of, the, out of their leaves. To control this, they have stomata. Stomata are openings in the leaves. The stomata will open to release water from the guard cell and release gases such as oxygen. And they will close in hot weather to reduce transpiration. This is so that the plant can save water when water may become scarce in dry conditions. Stomata are a plant structure that help the plant control how much water is lost. During the day, uh, stomata are open to let out oxygen and let in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Also, water is released. At night, uh, the stomata close, um, so uh, water is not lost during that time. Uh, those guard cells, that uh, kind of little sausage looking like cells, um, when uh, they are responsible for opening and closing the stomata.